Do you ever feel like it's not okay to be yourself? This could be a warning sign that you have experienced a toxic family member or toxic family dynamics. Today, I'm going to unpack toxic families, what to look out for, and how to navigate yourself safely over the holiday period or just over your life in general. This content may be triggering, so make sure you look after yourself and always seek professional psychological support. Welcome back to the What Is Eating You podcast. I am recording live today from Melbourne and I am so excited to be here. I absolutely love Melbourne. This is where I was raised and born and bred and I just have my family here. So it really is a special place to me. Can definitely confirm that the weather doesn't necessarily get better. It has been raining. It has been cold. But hey, that's Melbourne. So I'm here to talk about toxic families. Now, I just want to highlight that even though we're going to discuss the holiday period, I want to acknowledge that toxic family members are always present. Dynamics don't really go away. So this episode is for you if you have grown up with a toxic family or think you could have one, but you're not really sure because it can often show up in subtle ways. Now, to be very honest, I don't come from a toxic family. Have I had experiences with extended family members that may be considered toxic? Yes, of course, I think we all have. But many of the people I've worked with over the years and years of being a psychologist, I have come to understand what a toxic family looks like and how to navigate challenging family dynamics, which seem to be on steroids during the holiday season. So most people have at least one toxic family member or that auntie or that uncle or that cousin that always comments. But what does it actually mean? A toxic family or a family member is someone that makes you feel like it's not okay to be yourself. Someone who doesn't respect your boundaries. Someone that makes you feel guilty for having feelings and expressing yourself. Toxic family members can make you doubt yourself, feel guilt and shame. Make you feel like it's your responsibility to make them happy. And you want to avoid being around them all together. You might actually go on the other end of the spectrum and become an extreme people pleaser and feel anxious and always wanting to get mum or dad's approval. The biggest misconception is toxicity doesn't have to be physical abuse or something horrible happening. It can be as simple as emotional invalidation. Emotional invalidation is when you're told that your emotions are wrong and you can't trust yourself or your inner world. This might look like being told to stop crying when you hurt yourself, to stop being so dramatic when you're sad, or to quieten down and why are you so loud when you talk excitedly about your day. Now you might be nodding along to this and thinking, oh my gosh, my family does this, but I didn't know it was toxic. So I'm going to go through the 10 signs of family toxicity to be mindful of. Number one is rejection or lack of acceptance. Your family has never really accepted you for who you are. They've always wanted you to lose weight or take your job more seriously, work harder, do something else, but they don't seem to quite accept you in the way that you are. This can often feel like rejection or they might outwardly reject you. They might not include you in certain family events and just outright make you feel like the black sheep of the family. And then maybe you have excuses for it later. Oh, I didn't think you would want to come or, oh, this was just a small group chat that started between us. Or, you know, you don't like this kind of thing. Why are you making a big deal of it? So when you try to bring up things that bother you, it's sort of turned back on you, which brings me to emotional invalidation, which is your emotions are wrong and that makes you question your whole inner world. Am I wrong? Am I dramatic? Is this really me? The third thing is passive aggressiveness. So there's essentially three styles of communication. We've got assertive communication, passive communication, and then aggressive communication. So passive aggressiveness are sort of underhanded comments such as, oh, you know, when's the last time you did the dishes? Or of course, you're always late because you can't do anything on time. Ha ha ha. Let's just call her uh, Steph the, you know, 
one who's always unorganized, they might label you or call you names. Bullying. Sibling bullying is very real. Picking on one sibling or one child of the family, maybe they've made a different choice, maybe they're not conforming to the standard family values. Self-centeredness. So if your family tends to be self-centered or self-focused. Substance abuse. If there is substance abuse in the family, alcohol use especially. Oh, you know, mum just gets a bit rowdy when she drinks. Or, yeah, dad can get a bit mean or aggressive when he drinks. This is toxic. And you need to be really careful around this because the issue is people become so used to it and think, oh, yeah, that's just dad. Or, yeah, that's just pa. He just has a one few too many wines and, you know, the slurs come out or he's really mean to me or he pushes me and it's sad. I've seen teenagers think that this is normal. Gaslighting. This is denying your reality of a situation. So you might say, oh, you know, hey, everyone, you're late, Steph. You're always late. Didn't you read the message? I did. It's It said nine. No, no, we said 9.30. But the message said nine. Yeah, but, you know, the other day in passing, like we changed the time. Well, I was just going by the text message. Even though in my reality, the text message had the right time, they're denying that my reality is true. Narcissism. Flavors of narcissism. Now, not all narcissism is bad. It happens on a spectrum. But if you have family members who have this inflated sense of grandiosity, think they're superior to other people, Take advantage at your own expense. Maybe these family members ask you for money. Maybe they act better than you. Perhaps they have a sense of grandiosity. Oh, my house is always clean, not like your house. Perfectionism or obsessions with appearances. Now, this one is extremely prominent, especially with females and their mothers. You know, having a perfectionistic household, presenting yourself perfectionistically, wearing lipstick, make sure you've got makeup on. How does your body look? Have you gained a few pounds this summer? Are you looking tired? And they're always obsessed with how you look and make comments on your appearance. And the last one is emotional, psychological or physical abuse. So physically touching you in a way that's not appropriate, aggressive, demeaning you, demoralizing you, minimizing you. Now, I want to remind you that toxicity can occur on a scale and families can have varying levels of this. It might have been more present in your childhood or perhaps you've learned to accept it, but I want you to know it can affect your adulthood. Because if you were a child that grew up with this, two things either happened. You either learned to suppress your needs or be quiet so we don't upset mum or dad or we don't know what to expect because are they going to be drunk when I come home? So you learn to be the good kid, you learn to be quiet, you learn to suppress your needs. And that internalization of your needs can result in being a really anxious adult. Or the other thing is, you become a people pleaser. You go above and beyond to try to meet that parent's needs, try to make them happy at the expense of your own needs. And then your whole life, you're trying to get approval from other people by what you can do for them, how you can make them feel good. And you don't really present the real you. What are the impacts of having a toxic family? You might question your reality. You may have been brought up with a feeling that you were the one with the problem, not the other person. Oh, you were always the problem, child. You know, couldn't keep your mouth shut. The impact of this is astronomical. This can lead to an array of internal challenges such as shame, self-blame, guilt, lack of self-trust, not trusting yourself, difficulty trusting others, thinking that others are always going to leave you or abandon you or disappoint you, fear of abandonment, difficulty getting close to others, discomfort being yourself. Fear of success, feeling afraid of failure, always being on guard or being hyper aware, hyper alert of your surroundings, fear that you've done something wrong all the time, 
bracing for something bad to happen, having a fear of setting boundaries, not expressing yourself and ignoring your own needs. So now you know what a toxic dynamic might look like and how it might impact you. Let's go into strategies to how you can manage it, especially at this time of year. Now, I do want to highlight that the work takes time. So all those things I shared, shame, guilt, lack of trust, difficulty getting close to other people. This is something you've got to work on in therapy and it can take time. It's about starting to identify those parts of yourself that get suppressed and giving those parts of yourself what it needs in those moments. But here are some reminders that are going to help you get through this time period. Number one, it's not you, it's them. If you get triggered, if you get activated, if your mum comments on your appearance, remember, it's not me, it's them, it's their unresolved trauma. The worst thing you can do when triggered is the three Ds. Defend yourself, dysregulate yourself and disagree. I know this sounds counterintuitive because it is. Toxic people want a reaction. The best thing you can do is act boring. Boring as a rock. We call this grey rocking and not react to triggers. I know how hard this is, especially if you're an anxious or angry person or you've got that tendency. If your arousal is already elevated, it's going to be really easy to flip into hyper arousal. And what I recommend is before you go into these dynamics, do some meditation, do some exercise, get some feel good hormones and neurotransmitters in you. So when you're in this situation and if you're triggered, you're better able to calm yourself down and respond to it appropriately. So when you get triggered, name it and then you can tame it. Notice it internally and remind yourself it's going to pass soon. Take a break and step outside to breathe and regulate your nervous system if you need to. Do you need a toolkit to help you regulate your emotions? Check out my emotion regulation toolkit. And you'll actually get this toolkit free if you get the burnout recovery and prevention short course. So that's another great resource you can use. The second thing to remember is set boundaries. And if they don't respect them, have a plan. So we're always like boundary setting, boundary setting. Everyone talks about this. But many people also say, oh, they don't respect my boundaries. So if your toxic family says something rude and offensive, you can let them know that you're not going to respond to yelling or be spoken to rudely. I know how hard this is because this can set them off. It can send, you know, condescending responses. Ask them to repeat what they're saying in a more appropriate way or you will leave if this continues. And yes, this is going to feel awkward at first and a bit weird, but it's important that you practice this. And you can practice this in the mirror. You can practice this in the shower. You can practice assertive speaking with your friends. Now your plan, if they don't respect your boundaries, could be as simple as something like, if mum ends up getting really angry or really drunk and aggressive, we are going to leave. Or if my brother gets disrespectful, I'm going to stand up and go to the other room. So you can have a plan in place if they do respect your boundaries or things start to get out of control. Number three, have a topic deviation strategy. If your mum is known to talk about weight loss or how your auntie Meg has been on this new diet, an excellent strategy I love is the topic deviation strategy. This involves changing the topic to something more effective and useful for both of you. If you know your mum loves shopping and ornaments, say, hey mum, I forgot to tell you. Remember that antique shop you love, they're having a sale and I was thinking you could go check it out. Know what topics your toxic family members love. It could be sports and just deviate to that topic when other topics start to hit the fan. Okay. And finally, focus on peace, not proving yourself. I know this sounds hard. One of the best ways to learn to deal with your toxic family during the holidays is to stop trying to prove yourself right. Stop trying to defend yourself and stick up for yourself. When you've been emotionally invalidated by your family, you may feel a need to prove that you're right. Whether it's trying to prove to your family member how they hurt you, prove that your opinions are the right ones, or trying to win arguments. When you feel like you're not being heard or seen, you may feel the need to fight 
desperately for your right to exist, right? It's human biology. It's the fight or flight. We all crave to be liked, to be heard and to be validated. You feel like you have to prove yourself and your feelings and you might step into this fight mode. However, when you feel like you're doing this, This can look like you're trying to prove your worth. You're trying to impress others. But it often shows up simply as the need to be right. This need to prove that you're right goes back to a fundamental feeling that you are not being heard or seen. So you engage in an overcompensating behavior, but this only adds fuel to the fire. Trust me, I understand how hard this must be for you to disengage from. And I know you want to prove yourself, but... It will protect your peace to not do this in the long term. So when you try to be right during difficult situations like this, remember you're often sacrificing your own happiness by trying to imp- trying to fight an impossible battle. I usually tell the people I work with, it's like you're going into a milk bar expecting to buy a car. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get the validation you want from the people who don't have the capacity to give it to you. Remember, your worth is not worth it. As hard as it is, remember you have worked hard to learn that your worth is not connected to whether your family members see you accurately. It's not connected to their response to you or whether or not they can see your point of view. In fact, it's not connected to their opinions whatsoever. When you try to be right, you're essentially giving your worth to others and saying, only if I can prove that I'm right, I am worthy. So give up the fight and realize it's just not worth the battle. Someone else thinking that they're right doesn't mean they are. It just means you've avoided a fight that you're probably not going to win anyway. So find peace and confidence in staying silently confident in who you are and what you're about. In summary, we cannot change toxic families, but we can choose how much time and energy we exert on them. Similar to your negative thoughts. Can't pick which ones come up, but we can choose how much time and energy we give to them. If you can relate to this episode, let me know. It is a topic I haven't really covered, but I hope this helps you over the next season of your life or the rest of your life. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please take a screenshot, tag me on Instagram and let me know. I really wish you a safe and happy holiday season and know that you are worthy, valid and your opinions matter no matter what. I'm proud of you today and I cannot wait to bring you more and more value in 2024. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.